Hi everyone, Haley Cristela here with Shabby Chic Your Life and today I want to show you how we go about painting mason jars. They're a really great way to add any accent to a home office, a kitchen, um, any kind of living space really, a mantle, anywhere that you just want a little pop of color. It's a great way to be able to put it in without a huge investment or um, by changing anything too expensive. So they're just a really fun way to add character to any room. So we like to take the um, crown mason jars. Uh, they're kind of our favorite because once you get them distressed at the end, they have a really cool um, crown design on them. So they're, they're neat. And on the bottom of each of them, it shows you the dates. This one's from 1951. So we have some dating back into the 20s, which is kind of cool. So anyways, we like to make sure our jars are clean and ready to go. We usually do a whole load in the dishwasher and get a whole bunch done at once. That way we have a big supply ready and waiting to go nice and clean. So this one I'm going to do is, it's called Trousseau Blue. This is um, actually Valspar's line of chalk paint that we've been using lately. You can pick it up at Lowe's and they've just come out with it and we're actually really quite happy with the paint and its quality. We've used the Annie Sloan and love that too, but um, there's just a few different colors that I guess Valspar has, so this is one of them that we like. So you get your paint out, you get your brush. We like these um, Purdy brushes. They're really lightweight and kind of easy to use. So you just dip your brush in the paint and we like to start with the top of the bottle. So just putting the paint on, not too thick, because you're gonna have to go back and do um, a second coat for sure, to just cover up some of that um, sparseness, I guess. It, it, it kind of leaves it um, a bit translucent on the first pass, and then that second coat is usually the one that solidifies it and makes it more opaque. And I guess if you just wanted a wispy look, you could just do one coat, but we find that two coats kind of works better. So I'm just going around the bottle until I'm about, you know, three quarters of the way around. Then turn it upside down. You can't really see that, I guess, eh? You just turn it upside down and set it on the table and finish, quickly go around and finish the rest. When you do the second coat, make sure that the first coat is completely dry because if it's not, you end up just pulling off the first coat and it kind of goes all chunky and weird. So really make sure you let it dry. That's why we tend to do a whole bunch at once. We get a few colors out that we want to do and then just kind of do an assembly line because by the time you've reached the last bottle on the first coat, you can often go back and get the second coat on the first bottle that you did. Um, I would say about maybe 20 minutes for it to dry so that it's ready for the next one or longer. Okay, so that one's done. Um, this one I did previously and it's got the two coats on it already. I didn't want to for you with showing you how to do two coats, you can figure it out. So the two coats are on this one and the next step is to seal it with a wax. You have to put this on, don't skip this step because chalk paint's very chalky. It's, it's coarse and it's thick and it will chip off and this helps seal it on and keep it there um, and it keeps your piece lasting longer. So again, we've got the um, Valspar wax and if you look you can see that it's like kind of like a white lotion so you just put that on with a brush and it just go around and all over you don't need to coat it on for the mason jars one coat is enough when we do bigger pieces like tables and dressers we often put um, two coats on the tabletop part just to give it a little bit more durability. But for these, one coat's perfect. You could leave it a little longer than I do, um, but just for video's sake, 
to just go and kind of just wipe off any of the excess and it kind of I don't know if you can see that it gives it a bit of a, a shiny finish to it just a little bit not too much so that part's done you let that dry completely so I'd say almost even sometimes better part of a day because you don't want if you start to do the next step the distressing and the sanding part of it then it will take off the paint and it doesn't turn out very good. So I would leave that a little longer to dry. So the final step, I did these last night. This is a different color. This is Moonstone, which is also on that dresser that you see behind me that's not quite finished yet. Um, it's a really great color, Valspar color also. So the last step is to take your sandpaper, just a little piece, and you wanna bring out that detail because obviously you can hardly see it right now because it's all monotone of one color. So we want that design that's on there to pop out. So you just take your sandpaper, rub it over, taking off the paint, and there, now you can see that that whole design has come out and um, just gives it a little more detail. So you could go around the back and take a little more paint off around the top, wherever you like. Um, and then you can get into adding a few decorating ideas to these. So if you watch our next video, we'll give you some tips and tricks on how to decorate them and pretty them up even more. So subscribe to our YouTube channel below or head on over to the blog at um, shabbychicyourlife.com and see what we have going on. Thanks for joining me today. Bye.